Let's study about new chapter called the Earth in the Solar System. So, Solar System contains nine planets, right? Everybody is aware of that. And the Earth in which we live, it is one of the planet in the Solar System. And Earth is the only planet where life exists. No other planet has any life existing on it. And because the Earth has air, water, soil, these are the important components for life to exist. So let's see more about the earth. So sometimes if we observe the night sky, we see some objects in the sky, right? They will be twinkling, they will be shining or they will be just bright objects. So these objects are known as heavenly bodies or celestial bodies. And examples of such objects are stars, planets, comets and moons. So let's study about the stars. So stars are nothing but the twinkling spots of light which are observed during the night time in the sky. So these twinkling spots of light are known as the stars. And sun is the closest star to the earth. Sun is also a star children. Sun is not any other object. So sun is also a star, a biggest star. And this is the closest star to the earth planet. And star is nothing but a gigantic glowing ball of plasma. And this is formed by dust and gas. So these clouds, these giant stars are self-luminous objects that means they emit their own light and they give lot of energy in this form of light. They are emitting it by themselves. They are not taking it from any other object. So they are self-luminous. They light up by themselves. This energy is in the form of light and heat. So the twinkling sharp shining stars they have energy in them which is in the form of light energy as well as the heat energy. And what is the age of a star? The age of a star is almost between 1 billion to 10 billion years old. So stars are very very old and they have strong gravity between them and they grow smaller over the time and then they develop into black holes. So star day by day because of the gravity they become small and they turn into black holes and the hottest star that gives the bluish light and the coolest star gives up the reddish light. So there is a color difference between hot star and a coolest star. And why, why and how does the stars twinkle? That means the light comes glowingly. Sometimes it's like it switches off and then again it glows. Stars seem to twinkle because of their bright light. So how do this light actually travel? So this light travels through the earth's atmosphere because earth has air surrounding it. So these light travels through the earth's surrounded air. And then there is turbulence in this atmosphere which affects the way stars are seen. So if you are traveling in a flight also sometimes turbulence happens and the flight go doesn't travel in a straight line. It tilts to the right or left because of the turbulence, air pressure change and all that, right? Because Earth's atmosphere is covered with a thin blanket of air and light travels through this air and because of this changes in the air, the stars, because of this changes or the turbulence in the atmosphere, it affects the way the stars are seen by us. And all the stars together make for the Milky Way. So Milky Way means all the stars together. And this Milky Way galaxy, it revolves around the center of galaxy. Milky Way galaxy revolves around the center of galaxy once in every 200 million years. So in this image students, you see bright twinkling stars. And this is the complete stars which forms the Milky Way galaxy. So the next thing is constellations. What are constellations? Constellations are a group of visible stars. So those stars which are visible from the eye and these stars when combined together if they form a pattern when we view it from the earth then it is known as a constellation. So constellation is nothing but a group of visible stars that form a pattern when viewed from the earth and what type of patterns they form? They form a shape of an animal, a mythological creature, a man, a woman, or any object such as microscope, compass or crown. If the stars are joined together, they look like an any object. So this sky is divided into 88 different constellations in the year 1922. So out of these 88, 48 were ancient constellations listed by a Greek astronomer 
and there were 40 new constellations. So out of these 88 constellations, 48 were ancient ones and 40 were the new ones. And two of the easily recognizable constellations from the planet Earth are Ursa Major and Orion. And some other minor ones include Canis Major, Leo as well as the Taurus. So Ursa Major and Orion are the important major constellations. Ursa Major is also known as Great Bear. It is also known as the Big Dipper because it takes the shape of a ladle. Ladles, you know, if your mom has cooked dal or any curry, how do you serve it in your plate? You use a ladle. So, Ursa Major looks like a ladle. And then there is also something called Pole Star. Everybody knows the story of Pole Star, right? There was a boy named Dhruv and then the Pole Star came in the northern direction. So always Pole Stars are found over the northern horizon. And during ancient times, these Pole Stars helped the travelers to find the directions because the Pole Star is the brightest shining star in the sky and it is always located at the northern side. So this Pole Star used to help in finding the directions. And next moving on to Orion. Orion is also the most visible constellation. Because of its location, it can be seen from all around the world. And Orion is named after a hunter. That hunter was belonging to the Greek mythology. And the brightest stars of Orion constellation are Betelgeus and Rigel. And Orion looks like a shape. Next let's study about the solar system. Solar system means of the sun. So, sun is the major part of the solar system and this sun occupies the central position in the solar system and all other celestial bodies, planets, stars, other things, they revolve around the sun. So, in addition to the planets, the solar system also consists of moons, comets, asteroids, minor planets, dust as well as the gas. Who actually discovered this solar system? There was a scientist named Nicholas Copernicus, who discovered, who put forward the model of solar system. So this theory is known as heliocentric theory. He only told that all planets and moon revolve around the sun. So this is the image of a solar system. This is the sun and this is the nine planets revolving around the sun. Next let's talk about the sun. So the age of the sun is, it is almost 5 billion years old. So since 5 billion years the sun is existing and there is gravitational force, gravitational field in the sun which holds the entire solar system together. So all the planets which revolve around the sun, comets, moon, all these things are holded up together along with the sun because of the gravitational field. And what is the sun made up of? Sun is made up of hot gases. The temperature is always hotter in the sun because it is made up of hot gases such as helium and hydrogen. And the temperature in the sun is 5700 degrees centigrade. So that is very very hot temperature. The diameter of the sun is 13 lakhs 92,000 kilometers and this size of the sun is 109 times bigger than the earth. And the distance of the moon from the earth is less than half the diameter of the sun. This sun is only the primary source of heat and light in the daytime. Sun is the source of heat and light right in the daytime for all the living beings on the earth. And life on earth is possible because the earth is located at a correct distance from the sun. It is neither too far nor too near. And then the sunlight takes only 8 minutes to reach the surface of the earth. This is the image of a sun. It is like a hot burning star. Next let's learn about the planets. Planet is nothing but a celestial object which orbits around a star and all the planets are spherical in shape. Globe is also spherical in shape, right? Same way all the planets are spherical in shape and planets are non-luminous. Like stars are luminous objects, right? Planets are non-luminous. They cannot produce their own light. Then how do the planets get the light? They reflect the light of the sun which falls on them. And every planet rotates on its own axis which is known as rotation. And in addition to that, while rotating around itself, all the planets also revolve around the sun in an elliptical path known as the orbit. One complete orbit makes one revolution around the sun. Planets in addition to rotating around themselves, they also revolve around the sun 
which is known as revolution. So there are eight major planets in the solar system. Earlier there were nine, but then the Pluto was removed, and now remains only eight major planets in the sun. And the name of the eight major planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Uranus and Neptune. Earlier there was Pluto, but now it is removed. So when the sun was formed, the colder outer parts of the sun they broke up and formed into four gigantic planets, and they are known as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And these planets are made up of gas, and they are very cold planets. So they are known as outer planets. Whereas the inner part of the sun, this had rocks, metal lumps. and these all came together to form inner planets so the inner planets are mercury venus earth and mars so four planets are outer planets and four planets are inner planets and the easier way to remember this name of the planets is you have to remember one sentence my very elegant mother just served us noodles and then every words starting alphabet denotes a planet my is mercury very is venus elegant is earth Mother is M is Mars, J is Jupiter, S is Saturn, U is Uranus, and N is Neptune. So my very elegant mother just served us noodles. So earlier Pluto was included in the nine planets of the solar system, but later the International Astronomical Union declared that Pluto was just a dwarf planet, like Ceres, Eris, Sedna, and UB three one three. So it was removed from the main planets. So these are the total. nine planets of which four are the inner planets four are the outer planets so later this pluto was removed and then remained eight first there were nine planets in total so four inner planets are mercury venus earth and mars and the outer planets are jupiter saturn uranus and neptune next coming to the planet earth planet is earth is a unique planet because life is only found in this planet and it is the third planet from the sun and it is larger among the four inner planets and the shape of the earth is known as spheroid because in spite of being round in shape it is flattened at the poles north pole south pole that is why the shape is known as spheroid and earth is also known as the blue planet because 71% of the earth surface is covered by water water looks like blue in color right so that is why it is known as the blue planet and earth has a blanket of air surrounding which is known as the atmosphere and earth also rotates in on its own axis and also revolves around the sun this rotation and revolution causes the rotation on the earth this is the image of the planet earth so there are favorable conditions which facilitate life on the surface of the earth so what are the conditions because earth is at an optimum distance accurate distance from the sun and the and the temperature on the surface of the earth is at an average of 14 degrees centigrade there are different seasons and weathers on the earth water is available on the earth and atmosphere is available air is available and this air protects us from the harmful uv rays of the sun that is why life is able to continue on the surface of the planet earth next is earth is flat so earth is like a sphere Explorers who set out on voyages around the world they came back to the place from where they started this could happen only if the world was round shadow cast by the earth on the moon during a lunar eclipse is always circular in shape and the images of the earth taken from the space show that the earth is spherical so when we see a ship coming to a port we can see only the top part of the ship and then gradually and slowly the base of the ship so if earth was flat we could see the whole ship at once only next let's see about the moon the celestial objects which revolve around the planets are the natural satellites so every planet has some objects revolving around this planets they are known as natural satellites these natural satellites are also known as the moons of the planets so except mercury and venus all the planet have moons and that moon which we see in the sky that is the satellite of the earth and moon is a non luminous object it only reflects the light of the sun moon is at a distance of 
384,400 km from the surface of the earth and to complete one revolution around the earth moon takes 27 days and 8 hours and moon doesn't have any atmosphere no air on the surface of the moon it gets hot in the daytime reaches 100 degrees centigrade and reaches cold that is minus 150 degrees centigrade in the night and the surface of the moon is also not smooth it is uneven rough and has craters on it and the shape of the moon is also not same every day and the position of the moon is also not same the moon continuously gets smaller and continuously increases in size and we have a full moon night once in a month which is known as purnima and after 15 days we have a new moon night called amavasya where moon will not be seen so every fortnight we will have purnima and amavasya neil armstrong was the first astronaut to land on the surface of the moon in 1969 so in this image you see the phases of the moon where it increases and decreases in size next is asteroids asteroids are also celestial bodies which revolve around the sun and in between the orbits of mars and jupiter so these are also the parts of the planets which have exploded or burst millions of years ago so there was matter left over after the planets was formed these matter which was left over after the planets were formed these matter was known as planetoids so this is a asteroid and this is a planetoid next is meteors meteor meteors or meteoroids these are the pieces of rocks or stones which are moving at a tremendous speed around the sun so they move at a very large speed great speed around the sun and when these rock masses come near the earth they get pulled into the surface of the earth because of the gravity so as these enter the earth's atmosphere they start glowing because of the heat of the friction and this appear as light because now they are glowing they appear as streaks of light so these burning meteoroids they fall onto the surface of the earth and are known as then meteors so these meteoroids after entering the surface of the earth they start twinkling or burning and then they are absorbed as streaks of light and after falling onto the surface of the earth they are known as meteors meteoroids after entering the surface of the earth are known as meteors after entering into the surface of the earth they fall on the surface of the earth and cause huge dents or craters and then these fragments are known as meteoroids this is a meteor which has entered the surface of the earth and this is a meteoroid which has caused huge craters or dents on the surface of the earth